Ayo mama lu kire. Aku no bandu. Bandu ya mbabe be kumutaka rukwao. Mutu boji anga perawina. Oko epo ko epo. Even though there are no headstones, hundreds of people are buried here. This is the gravesite. You will see those small heaps of sand. These are actually graves. If we were to dig just with my hands, we will come across bones. This land became a makeshift graveyard when Namibia was a German colony. The, the burial was done by the German soldiers. There was no proper burial, no respect whatsoever to the dead. From 1904 to 1908, after a German general issued an extermination order, soldiers killed an estimated 100,000 people from two ethnic groups, the Herero and Nama. Many survivors fled, but Germany threw the rest in concentration camps, previewing techniques later used in the Holocaust. All this area, it was the concentration camp going into the sea. 30,000 people were kept here. Many of my family members were held in concentration camps. The killings shrunk the Herero and Nama from some of the biggest groups in Namibia to two of the smallest. Many historians consider it the first genocide of the 20th century. This one is Slachte Street. It's a street that says to, to, to slaughter, to kill. After the war, all those areas that we occupied, they were confiscated by Germans and most of these areas they are owned by uh, white settlers, if I may put it. The Herero and Nama filed a class action lawsuit against Germany in New York last year, using an 18th century statute that allows non-Americans to sue in U.S. courts over human rights violations. Since then, they've been visiting their ancestors to pray for success. <laughs> But the Herero's ancestors are buried next to German soldiers. It has been written there in German, the so-called heroes because they, they killed our grandmothers and fathers. We hope to get an apology for, from the Germans. They also want reparations money they could use to buy back land still held by Namibians of German descent. Today, white Namibians make up 6% of the population, but they own nearly 60% of the country's private land and don't want to give it up. I'm from Namibia, born and raised. They want the land back? How? <laughs> Sorry, but that's, that's really, that's just, I mean, really? <laughs> it's not even their land. If they wanted their land, then they should have done something 100 years ago. And used to say that the land originally even belonged to them. For all we know, there were people before them there who they took the land from, so. The German government declined multiple requests for comment, but it's publicly refused to call what it did to the tribes a genocide. And in court filings, Germany argues the class action lawsuit is illegitimate because it was filed in the US. Other bygone colonial powers, like the UK and France, are watching. A Nama and Herrera win could set a legal precedent, opening the floodgates for former colonies to sue over the historical record. It's over 100 years back. It's going to be very difficult for all the other uh, European countries who had uh, colonies in, in Africa. It will be very difficult if one country starts paying now and the rest will say, Germany is giving Namibia so much money since independence. And they made it very clear that they are willing to donate much more money for the country and not for a certain time. Over the last two years, Berlin has sent $150 million in aid to Windhoek. And Germany's ambassador has touted the fact that it gives more money per capita to Namibia than to any other country. People from the Herero diaspora gathered at a recent hearing in Manhattan. Until Germany faces us and addresses our legitimate complaint, any kind of agreement will not obliterate our lawful claims. The struggle will simply continue. 
Their lawyer helped American Jews get reparations from Germany after the Holocaust. I really don't buy the floodgates argument. The fact pattern is, is so clear cut. You have a written extermination order. There's really no defense that, well, you know, we were just putting down an uprising and maybe we were a little excessive, but it wasn't a genocide. Here you have a written policy. It's, it's the only written policy of extermination that I'm aware of. I don't know of a stronger case than this.